June 17th marked the 1994 NBA Finals between the New York Knicks and the Houston Rockets. To this day, if you ask any American about a spectacle from that day, they won't be recounting the game, rather a different event that gained headlines across the world. This day marked the most widely broadcasted police car chase in history. The pursuit was aired by several American news channels, including ABC, NBC, CBS, and CNN. Only NBC aired the game, but in a small frame on the screen while the police chase occupied the larger part of the screen. The origins of this massive publicity can be traced to the suspect's identity, the vicious crime in question, and the final verdict reached at the end of the trial. The police were pursuing retired NFL player Orenthal James Simpson, who was on the run after refusing to surrender following charges of double homicide. OJ was accused of brutally murdering his ex-wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. He told police he would surrender, but instead fled and was declared a fugitive by the police. At around 7pm, OJ was sighted in a white 1993 Ford Bronco driven by his friend, Al Cowlings. Al refused to stop the car and shouted out of the window that Simpson was suicidal and had a gun to his own head. Police followed the car slowly until shortly before 8pm when they arrived at Simpson's estate at Rockingham. Upon reaching the house, police officers had to negotiate before Simpson finally stepped out of the vehicle and surrendered. In his possession, they found a bag containing clothes, a revolver, a passport, and a fake beard and mustache for disguise. On the 24th of January the following year, the much anticipated criminal trial of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson began and was tagged the trial of the century. The trial generated a massive controversy, and in the end, people were left with two conspiracy theories that could explain the event of the murders. Let's go back to the beginning where it all started, then proceed to the murders and assess the theories put into play during the trial. OJ Simpson is a retired American footballer who played for Buffalo Bills and the San Francisco 49ers. His first marriage was to Marguerite Whitley, whom he had three children with. Marguerite would later describe Simpson as an awful person. In 1977, he met Nicole Brown in a nightclub where she worked as a waitress. Even though Simpson was married, he and Brown started a romantic relationship. In 1979, his first marriage ended, as well as his football career. Six years after, he walked down the aisle with Brown, whom he had dated for eight years. The couple had two kids together, but their marriage lacked marital bliss as there were numerous instances of Simpson abusing his wife. In 1989, Brown pressed charges of spousal abuse, to which Simpson pled no contest. Brown soon filed for divorce from her husband, and by 1992, the marriage was finally dissolved. However, Brown stayed in contact with Simpson since they had kids together. On the 12th of June 1994, both Simpson and Brown attended their daughter's dance recital at Paul Revere Middle School. After the event, the two went their separate ways, with Brown heading to Mezzaluna Restaurant to have dinner with her family. When the dinner was over, Brown stopped off for some ice cream with the children before returning home in Brentwood. Shortly after arriving, Brown's mother informed her that she had forgotten her glasses at the restaurant. They did not have to go back to the restaurant to retrieve it because Brown's friend, Ronald Goldman, worked there as a waiter. Goldman volunteered to take the glasses to Brown's home when he completed his shift at 9.50pm. This was the last scene of either Brown or Goldman, before a neighbor found them dead outside Brown's home at around midnight. The police were subsequently called to the scene where they secured the bodies and collected the evidence. Detectives Tom Lang, Philip Van Adder, Ron Phillips, and Mark Furman headed to Simpson's Rockingham estate to inform him of his ex-wife's murder. They were out of luck as Simpson wasn't home when they arrived, However, his car was present in the driveway. 
They claimed they found blood on the car's door and a trail of blood was discovered from the car to the front door. Fearing that someone could be hurt, the detectives gained entry into the home by scaling the wall. They alleged they stumbled across a blood-stained right-hand glove, which would later be identified as a pair with the left-hand glove found on the crime scene. When they called Simpson, he told them that he was away in Chicago, but would return the following day. The officers returned the following day where they took OJ in for interrogation at the Los Angeles Police Department headquarters. They observed a cut on his finger which was similar to where they projected the killer would have bled from. When he was questioned about the cause of his injury, he said he had sustained it in Chicago when he heard about Brown's death. Detective Lang then confronted him about the blood they had found in his car, after which Simpson recanted his statement and said he had sustained the injury on the 12th of June, but could not remember how he got it. His blood was collected in order to compare it with the DNA samples recovered from the crime scene. Since the police had no physical evidence at that time linking him directly to Brown's murder, he was released. This would soon change, as Simpson soon became the primary suspect when the preliminary DNA test revealed that his blood was a match with DNA found at the crime scene. Besides Simpson's DNA tying him to the crime scene, Nicole's blood was also found on a pair of socks in Simpson's home. He had also bought a stiletto knife earlier, which was consistent with the type of weapon used on the victims. Further adding to the mountain of evidences was the bloody shoe print found at the crime scene, which was the same shoe size Simpson wore. There were also claims he owned that exact type of shoe, but neither the knife nor shoes were ever found. On June 14th, Simpson hired a lawyer, Robert Shapiro, to handle his case and whom the LEPD began contacting in relation to Simpson's connection to the murders. On the 17th of June, the final DNA test result was released and the LAPD stated that Simpson would be charged with two counts of first degree murder. The police contacted Shapiro telling him his client would be taken into custody that morning, but Simpson told the police he would turn himself in by 11 a.m. 11 a.m. came, yet there were no signs of him at the police station. He kept stalling until he was arrested shortly after 8 p.m. after the highly publicized pursuit with police. Three days after his arrest, he appeared before a judge where he pled not guilty to the charges and on the 24th of January 1995, the widely known trial of O.J. Simpson began. There are two theories surrounding this case, and each of them will be evaluated using the prosecution and defense's arguments during the trial. The prosecuting team was made up of Deputy District Attorneys Marcia Clark, Christopher Darden, and William Hodgman. The team argued that Simpson murdered his ex-wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. They built their case around presenting a motive for the murder, DNA evidence, absence of an alibi, and witnesses. The motive for the murder provided was the issue of domestic abuse evident in the couple's past marriage. Simpson had pled no contest to a spousal abuse a few years back, indicating a history of violence. According to prosecutors, he was angry with the victim on the night of the murder because he considered the dress she wore to their daughter's school event as tight-fitting. His anger further heightened when his girlfriend, Paula Barbieri, broke up with him over the phone because he had refused to take her with him to his daughter's recital. Prosecutors painted a scenario where he headed to Brown's house to rekindle their relationship since the one he had with Paula ended to which she declined, and in response, Simpson went into a fit of rage. He stabbed Brown to death first, after which Goldman arrived at the home shortly after, leaving Simpson no option but to kill him too. On the night of the murder, Simpson had no alibi for one hour and 18 minutes, during which time the murders had occurred. A limousine driver, Alan Park, arrived at his house at 10.25 p.m. to pick him up for his flight to Chicago. Park said Simpson's car was not there when he arrived at the home, and he rang the doorbell three times but got no answer. He added that around 10.50 p.m. he saw a figure similar to Simpson holding a knapsack and attempting to enter the house through the front door, 
but stopped and went to the back instead. At 10.54 p.m., Simpson answered Park through his intercom. The total of 108 pieces of evidence were presented in court, including 61 DNA evidences linking Simpson to the murders. Among the DNA evidence point forward were Brown's DNA on a bloodstained sock discovered in Simpson's bedroom. Simpson and the victim's DNA on a bloody glove found outside Simpson's home, Simpson and the victim's blood found on the car door, Simpson's DNA in the trail of blood where the victim's bodies were found to the back gate of the house. Bloody shoe prints recovered at the crime scene and in Simpson's car were also presented as evidence. Shoe print expert William Bodziak testified during the trial that the shoe prints were from a rare Bruno Magli Italian shoes and precisely a size 12. The prosecution claimed that Simpson wore size 12 shoes and he allegedly purchased those exact pair of shoes. The other theory postulates that Simpson didn't commit the murders and was wrongly accused. The defense team comprised of Robert Shapiro, Johnny Cochran, F. Lee Bailey, and Robert Kardashian, collectively referred to as the Dream Team. This team argued Simpson's innocence by building their argument on the foundation of racial profiling and to paint the prosecution's evidence as unreliable. The defense argued that the DNA evidence was mishandled and the detectives in charge of the case were corrupt. They questioned the accuracy of the DNA results as it was a new scientific discovery and was still in its infancy at the time. Likewise, they argued that the DNA samples were mishandled during collection and during testing intimating that the samples had been contaminated in the process. They claimed the whole murder allegation was part of a conspiracy plot to incriminate Simpson by detectives Furman, Venatter, and other parties. Further pointing fingers at Furman and Venatter, the defense alleged that Venatter planted the victim's blood in Simpson's car and on his sock, while Furman picked the glove from the crime scene and planted it at their client's home. The team also painted a picture of Furman as racist and produced an old tape where he had referred to African Americans using the N-word and boasted of beating up black men. The trial lasted about nine months, during which each party argued their case and rebutted the other party's case. On the 3rd of October 1995, the jury retreated indoors to deliberate on the matter and just four hours after, returned with a not guilty verdict. O.J. Simpson was acquitted of all charges, but this verdict has since sparked a heated public debate as everyone couldn't come to terms with the decision. On one hand, some groups of people believe Simpson did brutally murder the victims and the black-dominated jury was biased, following pressure from the African-American community. On the other hand, some people believe Simpson was innocent and this was one of the few cases where a black man got justice under the American judicial system. In February of 1997, Simpson was found responsible for the murders of Nicole Brown and Ronald Goldman by a jury in a civil suit filed by Goldman's father. The Goldman family was awarded $33.5 million in damages but received only a tiny portion before 2000, when Simpson moved to Florida, where personal assets cannot be seized to compensate for liabilities incurred outside the state. The prosecution and defense each argued their cases and the jury in the criminal case decided the defense's argument was more compelling. The jury in the civil suit believed otherwise. Well. It's now time for you, the viewers, to make your own judgment after listening to each side of the argument. Tell us, do you think Simpson murdered Nicole Brown and Ronald Goldman? Or was he in fact innocent? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Likewise, turn on notifications so you never miss a video.